Hey, what's up you guys? Bloody Jacob here to bring you my review of this week's episode of Vikings on the History Channel. This week we've seen Season 4, Episode 16, which was called Crossings. And uh, ever since the last episode, all those angels, angels uh, which I did a very uh, late review for, um, I decided to try and uh, commit to uh, reviewing Vikings Weekly just... Uh, Okay, but, you know, spoilers in the title. <laughs> I'm guessing if you watch this, you have uh, seen the episode and are all caught up and everything. Um, but because of uh, the death of Ragnar last week, uh, I feel I just owe it to the character to uh, commit to the show more. I wish I had had uh, reviewed the show more often than I did uh, previously. Um, but I'm going to try and uh, press forward and, uh, you know, uh, start doing videos each week it's on at least, um, if I can anyway. Uh, but yeah, it was uh, going to be inter interesting to see how they would uh, follow up an episode like that. And let me just say again, I absolutely love the All His Angels episode. Uh, it was just so well written. I said in the video, and I'm still saying now, that was probably one of the best uh, single episodes of any show I've ever seen. And uh, I'm sticking to that. Um, it was just so well done, so well acted by Travis Fimmel. Uh, if if that man doesn't get an Emmy, it, it's just more it's just more proof that those things are just completely. Ugh. <laughs> um, but at the same time, it also felt like a punch to the stomach, uh, stomach of course. And it was going to be interesting to see how they would follow it up. You know, of course, uh, we know that Ragnar's sons are going to be seeking revenge against Ayla and uh, you know potentially uh, Ekbert as well. You know, in this episode, we see uh, Athelwolf or Aethelwulf, I should say, um, you know, trying to talk to his father about, like, a strategy for their defense when they inevitably, uh, you know, return seeking vengeance, and, uh, Eckbert doesn't believe that, or Eckbert doesn't, uh, think that, uh, Ragnar, or, uh, I should say, Eckbert isn't aware that Ragnar told, uh, Ivar to seek, uh, you know, vengeance on him, um, because they did have some kind of a bond and respect for each other, I think. And some people seem to be confused uh, as to why Ragnar still told Ivar to go after Ekbert when he does return. Um, you know, I was a little bit confused by that too, but I think uh, if you think back to the previous sort of uh, stick that Ekbert pulled, you know, with uh, killing the farm, you know, the Vikings farmers that they had uh, laid out, you know, closer to their land and things like that, it sort of makes sense. Um, if you just read through comments on various videos, you can probably find someone who can uh, uh, make it seem more understandable. Um, but of course, we know they're gonna you know return eventually, and uh, you know definitely uh, you know seek something. Um, so there's that part of that part of it was okay. Uh, we also seen uh, Bjorn, and you know as well as uh, Rolo, who had uh, wished to join them on the raid. And, you know, because even though Rolo is, you know, probably pretty more satisfied with it himself that he's now in a position of, uh, you know, ruling, um, you know, he still admits, you know, of course, to his wife that he does have that Viking, you know, part of himself. And, you know, he has that desire to go out and raid and do different things like that from their culture. Um, so it's good to see Rolo sort of back doing that type of stuff. We see uh, kind of an interesting development with uh, Floki. Um, you know, who seems to actually uh, not want to kill these people when they're worshipping. And it sort of reminds me of how uh, Ragnar fell in the way when he, like, discovered Athelstan. Perhaps it would be interesting if Loki started changing his views on certain things. You know, that'd be, a, <laughs> you know, kind of a big uh, contrast to where he was, you know, previously. But I think it could be interesting. And uh, Helga manages to save one of the kids. Uh, and, of course, you know, the, the two, uh, two other guys, I forget their names right now, but they're still kind of plotting against Bjorn, wondering when they should make their move on him. Um, I don't think Bjorn's going to be killed or anything. He's going to thwart whatever the attempt they, uh, you know, put out against him, I think. Um, but the most interesting part of the episode is definitely uh, back in Kattegat, for me anyway. And that was seeing just how uh, Ivar and Lagatha would deal with each other. And, uh, you know, since the death of uh, Ragnar, you know, I'm still kind of floored by that. Um, you know, I've been wondering how the show's, you know, how how invested I'll still be in the show. Like, for now, I'm still really invested because I want to see, you know, his sons and hopefully Lagatha as well, you know, avenge his death. And, you know, that will sort of drive me for a while, for sure. But I'm just wondering long term uh, how much I'll be into the show because... There were times when I wasn't as interested in the show as I am now, but having Ragnar there and Travis Funnel's acting, it always uh, kept my interest when I was watching. 
Um, so I'm hoping, uh, I, I still think it's gonna be a well done show and everything, I'm just, uh, I'm just gonna miss Ragnar, is basically what I'm saying. Uh, but Lagatha is definitely my favorite character still alive, and, uh, the dynamic between her and Ivar now, and, you know, Ragnar's sons in general is pretty interesting. Um, of course, with, uh, you know, Lagatha killing Aslog, which I was very happy about. Um, and Ivar seems to think that, uh, Lagatha just sort of did that, you know, out of ambition, just out of wanting to take over. And yeah, while well, Lagatha did promise, you know, to, uh, you know, or Lagatha did uh, obviously want to do that for some time to take back her home and such, um, I don't think Ivar is really seeing or understanding a deeper sort of background to it all. Um, but either way, he's probably not going to end up sympathizing with uh, Lagatha over it. Um, and I don't know the real history here. I don't know when Lagatha died in uh, real life, um, if it's even known. Um, please don't tell me, because <laughs> apparently the show is sticking pretty close to history now. Um, or, you know, it has somewhat always, but, you know, with Ragnar's death, that was pretty much exactly, uh, or very close to how it happened in, uh, as far as we know. Um, so if, uh, history says I like the dies at a certain point, chances are the show will probably do that. Um, so I'd rather not know history, okay? <laughs> um, but I think it'd be a shame if Ivar or the sons just, uh, killed Lagatha. Um, I don't see any of them being able to best her in a fight either, um, but I just think uh, it'd be better if they found a way to unite against, uh, like, Akbar and Ayla, you know, to avenge uh, Ragnar, and then sort of try to find some kind of mutual understanding somehow, I don't know. But uh, I think killing off Lagatha would be a pretty big mistake, whether it's real history or not, because she's probably definitely the biggest fan favorite left, along with uh, probably Floki, I guess. Um, but I really like Lagatha in this uh, episode, a really good uh, performance from Catherine Winnick. Um, she actually sees Ragnar briefly, we see sort of like a blurred, very brief shot of him. And, you know, she's still very much mourning him in grief. At first, in denial, she can't believe Ragnar is dead. But, you know, does you know she does uh, really know in the back of her mind that's probably the case. Um, but, you know, it's Ragnar, you know, the guy who's, uh, che you know, cheated death, he even faked his death at the end of season three. Um, he's seen, he seems supposedly, uh, unstoppable for quite a long time. Um, but, you know, just the emotion of that Catherine Winnick reacting to it, you still see the love she still very much holds for Ragnar. And, you know, of course, if she has a chance, she'll definitely travel, you know, to avenge him. Um, so that part was very good. Um, and this episode was a, a pretty good episode. I was thinking, like, 8.8 .8 or so to rate it. Um, but once I seen, like, the ending sequence, the final few minutes, it bumped it up to about an 8.99 out of 10, I think. Um, because we actually see who seems to be Odin, and I think the guy, the, whoever they picked as the actor, along with the makeup and the costume design and such, as the right look for him. Missing an eye, of course, we see these, like, ravens, you know, or, you know crows traveling with them. And, uh... You know, some very symbolic stuff, and I don't know if he's actually supposed to be there, if it's just meant to be like a more like a metaphorical, symbolic, you know, type of thing, um, or if it's just supposed to be like what the characters are, you know, believe they're seeing and such, and that's like their minds, you know, uh, you know, shown like that. I don't know, but either way, it was still a pretty cool uh, final sequence, I think. And I'm hoping that maybe somehow Odin's influence will unite them together and focus on what they should be doing instead of fighting amongst themselves. I don't know if it's going to be that happy, but just don't kill Agatha. <laughs> um, but yeah. So overall, pretty good episode. I'm going to give it... I'm teetering. Uh, I'm going to give it an 8.9 out of 10. It was still a pretty good episode. Uh, you know, very fine follow-up. I like seeing Agatha's reaction, especially, uh, you know, the start of however things are going to go with her and Ivar. Um, and then, you know, we also see uh, Bjorn and uh, the others seeing uh, Odin, and now they know that Ragnar is dead. Uh, Bjorn seemed uh, pretty shaken up about it, so maybe he'll return home sooner than he planned on. I don't know. Again, I don't know all the extensive history and such, but yeah. Giving it an 8.9 out of 10. Definitely not as strong as uh, All His Angels, but that episode's probably going to be the biggest standout of the series just because of the, you know, Ragnar, but. Still a pretty good uh, follow up episode, and now we have about four left in the season, I think. Uh, 20 episodes. Um, so yeah, it's been a very, very good season, especially uh, an incredible second half, and I can't wait to see where they leave it off. 
Again, just don't kill Agatha, please. <laughs> but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. You can find it on Facebook, like, subscribe. And my next couple of videos will probably be a review on Supernatural Season 10, as well as a haul video I might be doing late tomorrow night. We'll see. Catch you guys next time. Peace.